Can you turn me down a smidgen? Thank you. I'm like getting really hot. Is that a little better? Okay, thank you. All right, everybody. So um, growing up, I played soccer uh, my entire life, all the way through my sophomore year in college, uh, when I actually maxed out on concussions and, and couldn't play competitively anymore. Um, believe it or not, none of those came from soccer. Um, but I was a, a defensive player and actually quite an aggressive one. Um, and in high school, my job was if there was a player on the other team that was particularly good, uh, my job was to guard her so closely and so fiercely that she never touched the ball, um, essentially, you know, shutting the other team down. Um, and there was one particular game that I was that I was doing just this, uh, and this girl was just getting so frustrated, like so angry at me, um, and because she couldn't play right. Um, and then finally, there was this one moment the ball came, I kicked it out of bounds, and you know, she didn't get it again. And so as the refs were looking away, she just turned around, backhands me right in the face. <laughs> and at that moment, you know, your eyes start watering and my nose starts gushing blood. Uh, and there's a rule in, uh, at least in high school sports in Iowa, that you can't have blood on your jersey or you can't play. Um, and so my coaches are cupping under my face to make sure that no blood gets on my jersey. Pain. This is the uh, very first, actually only time that I've ever deliberately been just punched in the face. Um, and it is not a pleasant experience. The thing about like blood and pain is it's those things that like remind you, uh, you know, the physicality of what it means to be human. Um, the moments that we feel the most human, right? Maybe it's after you've had a big surgery and you're laying in the hospital and you can feel the scars, that kind of pain, the reminder of what our mortal bodies of flesh and blood really, really are. And I think about how crazy is it that God becomes this kind of flesh? You know, that God chose to come into the world in this like really vulnerable, painful way. Because being human comes with a lot of times that are just painful, not only physically, but also emotionally. Think about like even every day that you get older hurts a little bit more to get out of bed, doesn't it? Right? In our resurrection story this morning, we meet Jesus in the gospel of Luke appearing to the disciples. And it's all about this flesh and blood, his wounds. And he invites them to see how very real, very painful the marks on his body are, his human body of flesh and bone and blood. See, we, we linger in this time after Easter with Jesus for, for a little while before moving on to Ascension and Pentecost and all those things. We dwell in this time. And as last week's gospel in the gospel of John, which is always the gospel immediately following Easter Sunday, is when Jesus is revealed in the gospel of John to the disciples for the first time. They're locked in a room and he enters the room and he invites them to see, to touch his hands. And then again to Thomas, the same thing. Come and see, touch the hands, feel his wounds that he is present and that he bears these physical human marks of torture and his death. See, we linger in this time with Jesus post-death and resurrection to acknowledge for us to really see that God is still in Jesus walking and talking and eating in a flesh and blood risen human body. My preaching professor uh, in seminary, the Reverend Dr. Karen Wiseman says that God is not a tourist in this world because what do tourists do? They come, they check things out, maybe try the food, take a few pictures, get a souvenir and leave. 
God doesn't just visit us where we are. God came to pitch a tent. God comes to live among us for the long haul, to have our fears become God's fears, for our pain to become God's pain, that God comes to accompany us, to feel with us through everything that the human experience has to offer. Not to just, you know, come and say hi for a day and then leave. God comes to place God's tent in this world among us in Jesus Christ. On Christmas Eve, we talked about this audacity of God to do this, about how ludicrous it is for God to come to earth in the most vulnerable way possible, in a newborn baby, that God chose to put on human flesh and blood and become vulnerable, just like all the rest of us that this flesh and bone God in Jesus suffers all the same vulnerabilities. I'm sure every day it hurt a little bit more when he got up too. That he experienced all the pains that we do, even the physical pain of death that comes to all of us. And so we dwell in this time with Jesus in the resurrection to focus on his human body of what it means for God to come and do this, to come and be a human. And so we dwell here, just as the disciples are dwelling in this same space to see, to touch, to experience the flesh and blood of the risen Christ. And that's the point of all of the touching and seeing is that it's not just some metaphor, that this idea of a risen Jesus isn't just some fun allegorical story for us to talk about God. He says, touch and see. He eats food in their presence. And they see him before their very eyes, this Jesus who is alive. It's the incredible journey that our God comes and pitches a tent alongside us. That God came into the world to share the gifts that God gives us so freely in such a way as the human Jesus through his death and resurrection. And we dwell here because God says, you can't keep me dead because I am the way, the truth of the life. I create, I gave life to everything. And I choose to be alive in this scarred, wounded and hungry body of Christ, that I am here in everything that that entails. So we dwell in this Easter season and we take time to acknowledge Christ's wounds and how God chose not to stay dead, but to come back and give them the gift to continue to teach them, to give them life and to give them love and to give them a mission. That's starting from Jerusalem and heading out. It is their job to proclaim this miracle of the risen Christ for all of us who can't see and touch his wounds that their witness is us remembering this, that God came as flesh, bone, and blood to pitch a tent with us, to be with us through the long haul, to dwell with us through thick and thin, to share in our deep sorrows and our exponential joys, that this is the kind of God that we have, the one that always comes to us, that never abandoned us and who loved us so much that this God was willing to become an equal with us in our human bodies and embrace the most human vulnerabilities that we have, even death. Because this is the God that we have.
that does this to share God's grace and love with all of us through this gift. Amen.